YouTube, how's it going? Wake Run Collapse here. Somebody commented in a recent video of mine, uh, my standard intro, which is really no intro at all. It's just something I always say at the beginning, so I decided to switch it up ever so slightly just to throw you guys off a little bit. Anyways, welcome to 150 booster packs of darkness that consumes light. Yesterday, just a day ago, we did 150 packs of Battle Rainbow. Today, we get the other half of Sun and Moon 3, which will become Burning Shadows in English. So, if you're stoked to see me open up these five booster boxes of darkness that consumes light, make sure you hit the like button down below. And of course, if you're new to the channel, I think you might find yourself interested in Japanese openings. Get an early preview, lots of boxes of every new set as it's released. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, I would really, really appreciate it. I've already opened seven boxes of this expansion thus far. Uh, so even if you don't want to go through all of those videos and experiences the polls, uh, experience the polls firsthand, uh, I suggest you at least go back and watch box one of each case opening, uh, because you'll get a much better look at the artwork. Uh, with these openings, I tend to speed through them pretty quickly because I like to get these openings done in about an hour or so, if I can help it. Lord knows I'm not going to shut up, so I might as well open the packs a little faster. Uh, so I tend to open two packs at a time. As per the usual, these were purchased from AmiAmi.com, which is a Japanese retailer. And my sleeves are KMC Perfect Fit sleeves. That's what we use here. Anyways, starting off, we've got a Wimpod, Ralts, Simipor, Butterfree, Torment Spray, Tangela, Electric, Rhyhorn, Meowstic, and an Electros. So a little quiet for the first two packs. Uh, as far as expectations from these boxes are concerned, with a full art or better in each box, uh, my honest expectations are one hyper rare and four regular full arts, based on how we've done thus far. Got a Porygon 2, Esper, Pikachu, a Gyarados Hollow, nice. Uh, Guzma, uh, Stuffle, Mudbray, Metapod, Mudsdale, and a Toxicroak. So there's your sleeve right there. Actually, just filmed, finished filming uh, Battle Rainbow last night, so nice to get back into it here. We've got Tynamo, uh, Dusclops, Tangela, Rhyperior Hollow, uh, Wiki, Sock, Radata, uh, Morello, Bruxish, and A Beware. And yes, in the video that's technically going live today when I'm filming it, but it actually went live yesterday when you're watching this. Uh, I definitely missed sleeving a couple of hollows as I was setting them aside. I missed a, like two of them, I think. So we'll see how many I missed this time. So we got a Panpour, Rhydon, Caterpie, Alolan Raticate, Super Scoop Up, Magikarp, Porygon, Esper, Tangrowth, and Saviper. So that's kind of weird. Have I gone through eight packs with only two hollows in them? Hmm. That's odd. Japanese packs are one hollow or better every. Uh, other pack, and they're usually pretty well sequenced, so I wonder how stacked the rest of this opening is going to be. Oh, it's weird. I've got Curlia, Mudbray, Ta Krogunk, sorry, uh, Dust Noir, Shinotic, Rhyhorn, Metapod, Stuffle, Torment Spray, and Meowstic. I hope this wasn't like a mistake box and I end up missing out on, a, on like a GX or even worse, a full art. That would be just horrible. I guess we'll find out. Alright, Simipore, Dabskull, Porygon 2, ooh, Necrozma GX, awesome, haven't pulled a ton of those. Uh, Potown, Ralts, Wimpod, Panpore, Electros, and Butterfree. First GX of the opening, and it's a good one. Really hoping I could pull the full art of this card in today's opening. That mean a great deal to me. Uh, it is the only Hyper Rare I already possess from this set. Although if I were to miss out on a Hyper Rare and pull the Rescue Stretcher Ultra Rare, uh, that is really highly priced on TCG Republic and I don't know that it's totally warranted. 
So we've got Electric, Radata, Caterpie, a Zygarde Hollow, Guzma, Sock, Tynamo, Rhydon. Ooh, Galissapod full art. Very nice. Uh, that's pretty awesome. Uh, not just because, well, it's a full art, which is cool, and not just because the artwork is awesome, uh, but because we don't have this one yet. Uh, we actually had yet to pull Galissapod, Necrozma, and Gardevoir's full arts going into this opening. So that's pretty neat. Showing off there. Ooh, yes. Very cool. Here we go. 52 out of 51. The first numbered full art in the expansion. Groovy. Alright, so now I'm definitely feeling better. Better about this box. It's like, oh man, imagine, you know, now that they guarantee a full art or better in every box, me getting an error box and not being able to pull one. But at least that means on a uh, on a plus plus side, uh, we have the fact that I will probably be able to get a good idea of pull rates with this new sequence going on. Uh, because a guaranteed full art in every box is new to this expansion. It's something that we have not experienced as Japanese collectors. There's another Gyarados. And a Rhyperior, so we're pretty much back on track now. Actually, I think we are back on track with the with the hollow pulls. That's cool. Uh, yeah, in the past, um, the other Sun and Moon expansions for full, you know, 30-pack booster boxes, it's been, what would you say, 75% success rate? Uh, so bumping it up to 100% when I buy 12 boxes of each expansion uh, means that I will, on average, get an additional three full arts or better uh, for each expansion. Which is pretty sweet, but so far it seems like they've just upped, ooh, Alolan, not Alolan, regular Raichu. Is that regular Raichu? I think it's regular Raichu. I think they've, um, they've so far just upped the pull rates as I've experienced it uh, from the super rares. Which does in turn cause some of them to drop a little bit in value, but I think it's far more important to reward everybody who picks up a booster box. Shinotic, Butterfree, Esper, Wimpod, Radata, Marshadow, GX, and a Wiki. Pretty cool. Very nice artwork on that guy. Jam some loose packs in there. Yeah, as it turns out, I cut zero cards in yesterday's opening. I would like to continue that streak, that trend. Morello, Porygon, Simipore, Beware, Meowstic, Tynamo, Curlia, Caterpie, Dust Noir, Hollow, and a Super Scoop Up. So wow, guys, there's a lot of stuff on the horizon for the TCG in Japanese, so we're finishing up Sun and Moon 3 right now, and in just like, what, three weeks, they're releasing Sun and Moon 3 Plus, which is kind of ridiculous, and I got 20 boxes of that on order, um, pretty excited to see what the pull rates for those Shining cards might be, let's get a Porygon Z, and a Bruxish. Yeah, pretty stoked to see how this reinvention of the plus sets is going to go. Hopefully they do a good job with it. Hopefully they do a good job with it. Because pretty much everybody can attest to Sun and Moon 1 Plus and Sun and Moon 2 Plus, you know, being a disappointment as far as collectability is concerned. Yeah, mirror foils are kind of nice, but the, the cost to pull ratio is really not there. So we're hoping it turns around here. Uh, Tangela, Dusclops, Rhyhorn, Guzma, Mudsdale, Pikachu, Stuffle, Metapod, Zygarde, and a Tangrowth. Mm. 
All right, Esper, Rhydon, Pampor, Beware, Saviper, Morello, Caterpie, Krogunk, Alolan, well, I always say Alolan Raichu. Raichu, just say Raichu. And the SSU, and the last two packs of the first box. Anything good going to be in here? Maybe a Galissapod GX in the last pack? That wouldn't be so bad. Hey, it wasn't so bad. Very nice. Alrighty, let's clean up our mess a little bit. goes way down there. I'm actually using a bandit ring deck box today to be able to store all these cards in. So as you um as you may or may not know, as you sleeve cards into KMC sleeves, if you make a big stack out of them, they tend to be pretty um pretty slippery. And this is problematic, especially if you're making a large stack, because then the thing will just fall over and it will stink. It will just not be good. You don't want to, you know, damage cards, have them run under something, or have like a chair rolled over them or something. You don't want to experience that. You never want your cards to be unminted. So usually if the stack is taller than, say, like 20 or 25, I'll try to do something with them uh, so that they are protected and stay out of the way. Don't cause a little fracas. All right, so we're into box number nine out of our 12 box case, but only box two of this opening. Wonder what goodies might be in this one. So we got Sock, Ralts, Krogunk, Mudsdale, Potown, Mudbray, Electric, Dabskull, Raichu, and Butterfree. You know, I really should not sleeve the hollows as I go. But with there being so many boxes, I really don't want to have to go back and get all of these. And I just noticed I have like this huge mosquito bite on my arm. I just noticed it now. I don't think I was out that late last night. I thought I got home at like 7? Mosquitoes shouldn't have been out. Anyways, Tangela, Dusclops, Rhyhorn, Electros, Super Scoop Up, Pikachu, Stuffle, Metapod, Dust Noir, and A Beware. Yeah, it's not itchy. I haven't, like, scratched it or anything, but... Just so you know. Can you see that? Is that coming out? Kind of, sort of. WebMD! Am I dying? Is that is that what's happening? No, it's just on a not super fleshy part of my arm, so it looks worse. Esper, Rhydon, Panpour, Meowstic, Bruxish, Morello, Caterpie, Krogunk, Guzma, and Saviper. So yeah, anyway, so we have Sun and Moon 3 Plus coming out in July, and you're watching this in all likelihood in July because it's going live on July 1st. Ooh, another Galissapod GX. So I would say probably 90% of people who watch this video are probably watching it in the first month that it's uploaded. So then we've got, yeah, Sun and Moon 3 Plus around the corner. And then in September, Sun and Moon 4 will be out. And I will not be here to receive it. Uh, I'm probably going to miss the package. It's probably going to be uh, similar to the experience that we've just had. Ooh, another new full art. A Gardevoir GX full art. Pretty cool stuff. And there's a Tangrowth. So yeah, all, um, all jokes aside about the fact that they can't stop printing Gardevoir because, I don't know, there's not any other Pokemon they could make into GXs and Full Arts and stuff, this card does look pretty awesome. It does. And I did have to 
you know, regrettably admit it when I was reviewing these full art artworks the first time. And now that I see it in person, my suspicions are confirmed. It looks great. There you go, 55 out of 51, super rare. Oh, we're done. Pretty sweet. I'm just leaving it aggravatingly slow to mess with you guys. Uh, anyways, um, so yeah, uh, as I mentioned in a previous video, I don't know ugh, just how much I touched on this. I'm going to be in London in September, so... Uh, and it, my uh, my flights do not coincide especially well with this, so I'm hoping that number one, I'm going to be able to pay Ami Ami uh, while I'm overseas, and that doesn't cause some sort of like mess up or glitch or something. Uh, so that is a right here your hollow there. Uh, and number two, that I don't miss delivery by so much that it becomes like a huge problem. Uh, so my flights are the 10th through the 18th. Uh, I'm getting back into town in Boston the night of the 18th, which is a Monday. Uh, so I will assuredly miss Monday's delivery if they attempt it. Uh, I think I will be home and awake on Tuesday before returning to work on Wednesday. But we kind of have to see how that goes. There's a Gyarados. Ooh, and an Necrozma GX. Sweet. Stacked side of the box. Uh, so we might have some sort of mess up regarding the uh, the case openings there. And then Sun and Moon 4 Plus GX Battle Boost comes out like October 20th or something like that. Because that just got announced recently. It's crazy out here, I'm telling you. It's crazy. So many releases, so many sets. But very little cause for an impulse purchase if you're a, a Japanese collector who doesn't live in Japan. You can't just walk into a Walmart and be like, wow, look at this, you know, faux elite trainer box that costs 50 bucks. I'm just going to pull the trigger and buy it. Um, everything that you do here is online. You have time to measure your responses. You can't just be like, oh, I want it. I see it. My, my, my. I mean, you still can do that, but going online purchases with a credit card route is probably not the best one for this. Oh, and there's a Gardevoir GX. Wonder, with this uh, fourth GX popping up so quickly, if we'll get a Mars Shadow GX and this will be a 5 GX box. Hmm. We shall see. If they want to mess it up by mistake and accidentally give me a Gardevoir Hyper Rare too, that's, you know, that's chill. I'm fine with that. I'll forgive your mistake. It's got Metapod, Esper, Morello, Mudsdale, Super Scoop Up, Tangela, Porygon 2, Panpour, Dust Noir Hollow, and a Meowstic. It's getting decent with the names now. Decent with the names. I don't knock it out of the park, but I do okay. Wimpod, Tynamo, Krogunk, Shinotic, Torment Spray, Radata, Rhydon, Porygon, Rhyperior, and a Seviper. I will mention that even though the increased pull ratios is, I think, a good thing for collectors, and I really would struggle to find someone who disagrees with that, uh, if we don't pull another Hyper Rare out of Darkness that Consumes Light, I would consider that a disappointing aspect of this new pull ratio. Uh, because while we did get um, the two hyper rares that I wanted the most, and that's key, like, let's not forget about that. Uh, I've pulled the hyper rare out of each expansion that I wanted to pick up the most in Charizard and Necrozma. Uh, Necrozma being my favorite artwork, and Charizard being, you know, both prestigious and also the most expensive. So it's important to, to think of that. Um, to get rid of some of this pack mess. Uh, to only get a, to only experience personally a one in twelve uh, boxes hyper rare pull ratio is pretty disappointing. Uh, so uh, a hyper rare from one of the remaining boxes, any of them really, 
Ooh, there's the Mars Shadow, so we did get a 5GX box. Uh, anything, really, um, would go a long way. It would increase our overall Sun and Moon 3 Hyper Rare Pull Ratio to 1 in 8. It definitely should be 1 in 6. Ideally, it'd be 1 in 4, but I'm going to try not to push it too much. I don't even know what you English collectors are doing if you're trying to complete it. And you're trying to do it without, like, a Darium-style budget. Especially if you're just doing it with opening, instead of just buying the cards that you needed. Doing it the pure way. There's a Gyarados. And it's a Viper. Uh, I am not going to make that type of price investment. No sir, no ma'am. I had to re-up on sleeves, but I had them ready. I just, I can't see the, um, the benefit because I can't unload Japanese cards at that rate. And plus, Amiyami has dropped their abilities to um, to get pre-orders in down to 12 per new expansion. Last hollow of the box is going to be Porygon Z. I mean, that's not to say that I would, you know, double up on cases and get 24 boxes of each set if I knew I could sell them. Because that is probably too much work for me. But if I did that, I'd also have a lot more full arts to be able to sell. And I'd probably be able to sell common, uncommon, hollow rare, complete sets like crazy. So I'd probably price them specifically to move, although I think I already do that. I mean, common, common and uncommon, so no hollow, no GX sets from Sun and Moon 3 will be $4 a piece, uh, just to give you the heads up on that. Um, let's see. Yeah, this worked out okay last time. Easier on the reach, I think. I don't know how much more aggressively I can price them uh, without no longer making it worth my while to build the common on common set and ship it out and stuff. Because, I mean, it is $4 plus shipping, so then I have to charge you shipping for it because I'm not going to overcharge you for that. I don't know, it's, it's a complicated scenario. Alright, third box. We're starting things off with a Dust Noir Hollow. Now, I have begun the sort for, uh, for Battle Rainbow, and I think I have eight duplicates each of the GX's roughly there's, there's another Necrozma it's what we like to see I think some of them are nine like I think Ho-Oh and Alolan Muck I got an extra nine that will be available for sale and then eight each for Charizard and Noivern so I'm hoping that it's oh boy I think we might have just Caught a card there. I think it got stuck on the top of the pack. Let me see. Yeah. That one. That one got stuck. I think it's just an uncommon, though. Oh, Zygarde Hollow. So the chewed up card, the sacrifice. Oh, it's just a Mudbray. Sorry, bud. Over there you go. Sometimes speed sacrifices a common card. Uh, for those of you who do not know, opening Japanese packs quickly without scissors is a bit of a challenge. And it gets sweaty under these lights, and you don't want your hands to start slipping or, you know, accidentally bend a whole pack just trying to muscle the thing open. 
There's a Gyarados. Yeah, now more of the uh, more of the cards are sticking. This is weird. I don't know if maybe it's the humidity in the room or something. Anyways, back to basics. Wimpod, Panpour, Electros. Well, not Electros. Electric. Not a regular Gardevoir. A big Gardevoir. A duplicate Gardevoir. A Gardevoir full art that you just saw. So we're not going to spend much time looking at it. I am, however, going to sleeve it after I sleeve this Porygon Z, which has also popped up. Because yes, you've seen it. You've just seen it. Let's see if I can fish it out of there and we can show them to you side by side. You know, Gardevoir is really not a, a bad duplicate to have for a full art. Yep, yeah, there you go. That's cool. Uh, because it does guarantee... Oh, we'll just pile them in there. Uh, it does guarantee that somebody is going to be able to get one. And that's probably a little bit higher on the list than somebody getting like a Galissapod or something. So let's see. So out of my remaining two boxes, what's the dream scenario for me? Because that was kind of an underwhelming... <laughs> card to get two boxes in a row. Um, definitely want to get the Necrozma. Regular full art. Ooh, there's a Raichu. And then... Hmm... Hmm... I do want to pull another Hyper Rare. But I don't know which one. Maybe Marshadow? Yeah, maybe Marshadow would be a good one to pull. Uh, Gardevoir would probably be the most expensive one. Stop! Um, maybe Gardevoir would be the most expensive one uh, to have to get after the fact. Uh, but with us getting so many Gardevoirs in this opening, I'd rather mix it up a little bit if I can. Maybe that's just me. So here's a question for the comment section. To those of you out there with larger amounts of responsibility slash less than impressive amounts of free time, uh, when you are, you know, really busy with stuff and you are struck with the inspiration to, like, do something, to, like, spend your free time or waste your free time doing something, what is it that you think about doing? It's a weird question. It's not really, like, a fantasy thing. It's just like, wow, if I didn't have this and this and this and this to do, I would much rather be blank. And maybe it's something that you do get to enjoy often when you're not as busy. Or maybe it's something that you really don't get to touch at all. Like, I used to be a huge movie buff. I just don't get the opportunity to watch them anymore. There's a Porygon Z. Oh, I think I missed some sleevings. Yeah, we got the Gardevoir. We just need these. But oftentimes, like, I'll just be, like, faintly reminded of one of my favorite movies and think to myself, man, I really gotta go and watch that now. And that'll be the thing that kind of takes over the, the thought process for a little while. This, like, compulsion to watch something that I don't have time to check out. Like, uh, for instance, right now, if I had myself a spare couple of hours, which it doesn't look like is going to happen today or tomorrow, uh, I would be watching Up in the Air, uh, which is, is that my, that's probably, yeah, that's got to be my favorite Clooney movie. It's totally awesome. Um, if you haven't seen it, check it out. 
Also features a young Anna Kendrick, too. And she got nominated for an Oscar for this movie, too. Which is pretty great. But I'll, like, often think to myself, I'll, like, recall back to not just the movie, but how I felt watching the movie. And I'll want to recreate that experience for myself. And maybe you guys are the same way. Maybe there's, like, a live album of a band that you really, really enjoy. So you try to recreate the concert experience. Whether you were there or not, you still try to recreate it by listening to that live album. I don't know. Some of my favorite movies are just like that. And there's a Galissapod. We keep forgetting the sleeve stuff. What are we doing? There we go. All that can go over there. Yeah, I'm going to say, ne anyways, Necrozma, Super Rare, and Marshadow Hyper Rare would be the ideal finish. The Necrozma Super Rare uh, is definitely the priority for me. I want to pull that card on camera. I want that to happen. There's a Gyarados. I know sometimes I'm struck with inspiration to watch anime too, but that is much more of a time investment. To you out there, I'm sorry about Code Geass. There's Rhyperior and Abruxish to finish out the third box. I was recommended Code Geass and uh, watched like five episodes of it. And I really liked it, but then once I got out of the rhythm of watching it consistently, because I had like a couple days that I couldn't watch it, it kind of fell by the wayside a little bit. And that's something that if I were watching a show right now, I would be experiencing because I'm doing all these openings in my spare time. And then tomorrow, working 5 to 3, then driving to my friend's mom's wedding, which is over an hour from my job. I'm going to be there for a while. Uh, for sure. Uh, and then we'll come back late. But being off Sunday and Monday, I'm just going to work out for the sale video, and then maybe I'll get to watch my uh, watch my little Clooney flick. And I get to flick while I watch Clooney. Just kidding, that's gross. And also anatomically incorrect. That is a boy. Oh, like, could you blame me? It's George Clooney. Who cares how, how old he is? He's hot! Box 11, coming at your faces. Hmm. <laughs> Actually, I just found another, another Skeeter bite. Yeah, I'm starting to think there was one in my bedroom. Great. Great, grand, wonderful. Nice times. Now that I've recognized it, it I'm going to feel, like, really itchy. Come on. Don't be like that. Pretty sure we just sniped all pack there. Yeah, we sniped all pack. We're good. Caterpie, Magikarp, Porygon, Electros, Saviper, Esper, Curlia, Mudbray, Porygon Z, and a Guzma, with the Porygon Z being the holographic version, and I'm just going to continue talking without taking a breath because it makes people uncomfortable because they think I'm going to pass out and die. But that's not going to happen. It would make for great content, great entertainment. Uh, Krogunk, Rhyhorn, Metapod, Bruxish, Tangrowth, Stuffle, Simipore, Dab Skull, Dabs Noir. He's thinking about that dab. He's reaching for the dab. You should know how far behind the times Pokemon is with stuff. And, by the way, a little Eradicate.
Yeah, knowing how behind the times uh, all these are, if they tried to put a meme into something... Like, can you imagine if uh, Pokemon tried to put memes into cards? Like, every set had one meme in it. Like, there'd be, uh, there'd be a holographic card doing the Dap Boy thing, or something like that. Or there'd be something in Japanese translated to An Hero. That's how, that's how behind they would be. They would be An Hero level behind. They would be going like, they would have Homestar Runner references. Hey! We got it! Ah, we got it. Yes! This card is beautiful. This card is so nice. Oh, uh, we gotta put it down for a second. Look at the other cards. Hold on. I'll be back. Yes. Look at that fine, fine detail on there. The colors are beautiful. The the just that solid jet black, that Vanta black. Shout out to JYT Gamer. Um, it's just awesome. It's just awesome. This was by far my favorite full art in either set, and of course it was the last one for us to pull. Fifty three out of fifty one. But Necrozma is here, and is spectacular. Probably not going to show up too great in the low lighting. Yeah, it actually still looks pretty good. But this is where it's at. Stunning. Stunning stuff. If I were sick, this would be what the doctor had ordered for me. I'm like really excited to have this card, even though I know I could have just as easily purchased it. And that's something that I think gets lost a lot when you have these massive sets. Uh, the, the Pokemon collectors that are going for master sets, that are going for, you know, the playable expensive stuff for resale value and such. That's, you know, that's important. And it's an economical means. Come on. <laughs> Uh, it's an economical means in order to continue the collection because you do need to, when you're collecting on a grand scale, you do need to, to a certain extent at least, uh, be able to turn over the stuff that you don't need uh, to be able to finance it. Because mm, cards ain't cheap. Uh, my two cases for Sun and Moon 3 were a little over 900 bucks. But I think something that is often you know, pushed down, or at least in the last couple of years, is the joy of pulling the card that you like the most. I mean, whatever happened to that? Isn't that chase of that one card that you like the most supposed to be exciting? Yeah, it's exciting to chase for shamans. Shamans are, you know, expensive cards. They're popular cards. Uh, Tapu Lele is the same way. Uh, the Dark Ride from Sun and Moon 2 Plus is, you know, to a lesser extent the same way. Uh, I end up swinging and missing on that. Uh, but, like, whatever happened to just, like, having your favorite card and being able to pull it whether you thought it was amazing or not? I'm trying to think of a, of a good example. Oh, you know what a good example is? Back when they had Ace Spec cards, anybody around in those days... Black and white six, black and white seven, black and white eight. When they had those um, those fancily holographic uh, trainer cards, your know card I loved was the A Spec Gold Potion. That was like I don't know what it is now, like a three dollar card or something like that. I'm sure you could get them cheaper if you bought like a big bulk purchase or something. But I loved pulling the A Spec Gold Potion. I love the Flygon Hollow. I love, you know, cards that didn't have to command value in order to be interesting from a, from a collectible standpoint. Remember my love saga with Lapras? In your face, Taylor Swift. Write a song about that. The one I collected like 30-something Lapras. Yeah, 
I actually did that back in the day. There's another Dust Noir. Is that another? Yeah, that's uh, that's another full evolutionary line in a pack. Uh, back when I collected Star Wars cards for the Star Wars customizable card game, I collected every whiteboarded Efant Mon I could find because I thought he looked awesome. And that was a joyous experience for me. But I think too often, you know, myself included, uh, we look at the uh, at the financial aspect of it and judge our successes and our failures with a certain set based on how much more money it's going to cost to complete it or how much money we're able to make by collecting it and getting extra cards. Trust me, I can't be here without the sale video that's going to follow tomorrow. Uh, this type of collecting would not survive uh, without, without sale videos. If I was told that I had to stop selling Japanese cards, I might not even buy the next set. If for some reason it became like wildly illegal or something to sell Japanese cards because they didn't originate in the States. I don't know, something strange like that. Uh, first of all, we'd, we'd hop on Discord and we'd figure something out. But but like without the sale videos, this well dries up instantly. There's no like escape plan. But you have to find a balance. There has to be a way to do both. By the way, we're going to move a lot of those right there. Because, yeah, you got to be able to do both to a certain extent. There's a Rhyperia. Uh, because without the business aspect, uh, you are not going to be able to finance enjoying, you know, large-scale collecting in the first place but without the enjoyment aspect of it do you really want to just do it as a business I could kind of but I prefer the reliability of my real job maybe that's just me uh, Simipore, Tangela, Electric, Shinotic, Tangrowth, Rhyhorn, Porygon 2, Esper, Gyarados, and a Torment Spray Pikachu, Stuffle, Mudbray, Mudsdale, Super Scoop Up, Metapod, Tynamo, Dust Noir, another Necrozma, excellent, and a Toxicroak. And now we're just all lying in wait to see if we're going to pull one more new card out of the last booster box. Got a Necrozma Hyper Rare. Got two Ultra Rares. I wonder. Uh, Tangela, Sock, Radata, Potown, Meowstic, Morello, Panpour, Rhydon, Raichu, and a Beware. So now it all comes down to this final box. Go. The last box of Sun and Moon 3. I'm pretty happy to be at this point. You know, to be done with the filming. But I am going to miss it. Yeah, I am going to miss it, and I'm also glad that I don't have 20 boxes of each to open. Sun and Moon, why did I do that to myself? Man. Ugh. 
a big old stretch. All right, let's do this. Now we'll remember, we're wishing for a hyper rare Mar Shadow. We're wishing for a hyper rare Mar Shadow to give us hope for the pull rates. Esper, Rhydon, Panpour, Dust Noir, Saviper, Morello, Caterpie, Krogunk, Raticate, and Butterfree. Also, and mostly sorted on hollows, so that's kind of cool. Just a matter at this point of running the air conditioner so that the room is cool enough to let Movie Maker do its thing without erroring out the computer. Uh, Tynamo, Radita, Magikarp, Galissapod GX, Wiki, Dabskull, a Curlia, Porygon, Shinotic, and a Tang Growth. So as we tour through the remainder of the box and the last box of darkness that consumes light we get a chance to see these GX cards one last time uh, definitely hoping that we don't pull a Gardevoir oh we missed a card hold on this is gonna throw off the ratio I think Tangela, Wimpod, Ralts, uh, Simipore, yeah Zygarde, Torment Spray, these other guys It's cool to see it one last time. Cool to experience the GXs and the hollow artwork. I think I do prefer Darkness that consumes light as an overall set. Uh, now that I've gone through as much of it as I have. Uh, the Gyarados, the Zygarde, both great hollows. Obviously Necrozma, uh, one of my favorite GXs. Uh, significantly, significantly looking forward to pulling a Guzzlord GX Super Rare in the future so if we can have that happen uh score all right you know what this is this is okay i am bummed about the lack of an extra hyper rare i am bummed that we're only getting two hyper rares out of 24 boxes on its own that not so great but now we have a full art supporter that we're going to be able to unload in the sale video quick zoom in to our full art wiki, 57 out of 51. And the full art supporters, I don't think, are horribly priced. Which, if anything, is good news for you guys. I mean, it's good news for me, too. But It's kind of rough, though, to only get one hyper rare per case per case four hundred fifty dollars gets you a hyper rare I, don't know. I gotta work on that or maybe i was just you know maybe i was just below average maybe i didn't get them straight from booster cases maybe it got mixed between two and i just didn't do great with the pulls i don't know if you or anybody you know uh, opened a high quantity of sun and moon three booster boxes uh let me know in the comment section without spoiling the polls that i got because i delete those comments i'm just letting you know i delete those comments like a hundred percent of the time if you blatantly spoil what i pull in a video um let me know what the um what the experienced pull ratios were for you know super rares versus hyper rares and ultra rares because we went what did we get yeah, we just got the two, uh, but we do have two duplicated super rares as well, because we also have a duplicated Mars Shadow. And there's a last Necrozma. That's pretty cool. Uh, because we are going to have Mars Shadow and Wiki make an appearance in the sale video on Sunday. So then we got the other six, so that's eight. Is that eight? No, and we got a Gardevoir, too, so we got nine. So 75% of our, um... <laughs> let's just open one pack. Come on! Um, yeah, so we have a Gardevoir, Mars Shadow, and Wiki from this set that will all appear in the sale video. Um, and then we had one Hyper Rare, two Ultra Rares. That's a little wonky. So I think they um, they left Hyper Rare and Ultra Rare exactly the same 
it just boosted the pull ratio for, for super rares. Whatever, that's fine. I have to face facts. This is a business, and they have to run it like one. Doesn't mean that there's not improvements they can make. But I don't know, maybe everybody else is getting 1 in 6 on Hyper Rares. That would make me feel better. It would give me better hope for, uh, for Sun and Moon 4. Anywho, we've got Simipore, Dabskull, Porygon 2, Mudsdale, Torment Spray, Tangela, Porygon 2, uh, Panpore, Dust Noir, and another Torment Spray. Some duplicates between those two packs as we split the box in half. Come on. There we go. Error pack, all hyper rares. Darn. There's actually nothing there. But it looks like this video is going to come in under the one hour mark as well, which is important. For sanity's sake. I don't want it to be brutal on you guys. There's a Rhyperia. I mean, my long openings tend to do a little better. People, there's like this whole, like, subset of people who see longer videos as extra content, and you literally can't make... Well, like, once you start building an audience, you literally can't make a video so long that no one out there will consume it. It just doesn't happen. It's wild. I see it as very supportive, but also, like... I made an every X and Y Japanese booster box video that was like 3 hours and 53 minutes. And holy crap, the number of people who watched it. <laughs> I don't know what the view count is now. I think it's like 60,000 or something. But I bet if I looked at the analytics, I'd be shocked by how many people stuck it out for the whole video. Oh, by the way, I need to get rid of some of those. Make some room. So we got Tangella. Ooh, there's a Marshadow. Cool. Looks like maybe we did get our wish of no Gardevoirs. So we got Calissa, Pod, Necrozma, and then the Marshadow. I guess the last box worked out kind of okay. Six more packs to go, youngins. And that will close the door on Sun and Moon 3. And then we will sort and make a sale video. We will do that thing. So we've got Morello, Porygon, Simipore, Gyarados, Mudsdale, Ralts, nope, Curlia, uh, Caterpie, Potown, Butterfree, and Tynamo. That's such a great looking hollow, this Gyarados. Uh, we didn't really start off on the right foot with these sets. Uh, the pulls at the beginning were a little bit underwhelming. The delivery issue uh, definitely put a bit of a bad taste in my mouth, especially not being able to upload for like four days because of the way it worked out with the work schedules. There's a Porygon Z. Uh, but I think the set did achieve some redemption in being able to continuously you know, build momentum as we moved on with these boxes had a lot to do with it. Because there's no dud box. When you have no dud box, it's just, I don't know, it's a better experience. So kudos to them for doing this. Uh, you still need to refine it a little bit. In my mind, you do need to refine it a little bit. Got to work on that hyper rare pull ratio. Ultra rares, ultra rares are fine. You don't have to mess with that. But the hyper rares, it's crazy. Last two packs, we've got Tangela, Dusclops, Rhyhorn, Raichu Hollow is going to be our final Hollow in all likelihood. 
Meowstic, Pikachu, Stuffle, Metapod, Bruxish, and a Guzma for our very final card of Sun and Moon 3. So let me just cut out of here for a quick minute so we can sort through these cards, get a little recap going for you, and I'll be back to show you everything that was pulled. Alrighty, we're back with our recap. Plenty of hollows to be shown off. Bunch of Gyarados hollows right here. Did pull two in every box. There's the Raichu hollow. Got nine of those. Uh, Dust Noir, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So two in every box. Rhyperior, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine Rhyperiors. Uh, Zygarde, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And Porygon Z, we ended up a lot lighter. One, two, three, four, five, six. Only six Porygon Zs in those five boxes. Now, as far as GXs are concerned, again, we weren't perfectly even with these. We got five Galissapods. One, two, three, four, five. Five Necrozmas, which you knew was going to make me happy. Then three each of Marshadow. And Gardevoir, which it felt like we pulled 50 of. But it might have something to do with our full art. So everything was a super rare in this opening. No hyper rares, no ultra rares. But we did get to feature the Galissapod full art. Two copies of the Gardevoir full art. The Wiki supporter full art. And of course, my personal favorite, this Necrozma full art, which is going directly into the collection. So that's going to do it for Sun and Moon 3, guys, and the double case opening. Thanks so much for checking out these videos and hanging with me and sticking with me through all of this. I really do appreciate it. Make sure to show your support by hitting the like button, dropping a comment down below, and if for some reason you got to the end of this video and you haven't hit that little subscribe button, I would greatly appreciate it. I'll see most of you tomorrow for the sale video, some of you on Monday for the completed, well, the, the complete set progress video, I guess we'll call it, and then from there on out, We'll see what happens.